This is Digital Tools for Architects.com, Digital Life 0.14, uh, Huggin, using Huggin to stitch panoramic images. Uh, Huggin is a great piece of software that allows us to stitch a full 360 degree panoramas. Um, and it's, it's, it's great not only because it does a good job, but also because it's free. It's available for free on huggin.sourceforge.net. Um, you can go ahead and do a Google search for Huggin and find it that way as well. Uh, it's built on the Pano Tools um, set of code in terms of how they're, they're actually stitching the panoramas together. There are paid graphic user interface options for Pano Tools. This one happens to be free, free and it's pretty darn good. It's a little bit slower than some of the other options, uh, but it's perfectly fine for what we're trying to do today. So I've gone ahead and I've opened Huggin. And from here, what we need to do is we need to load up some images that we're going to stitch together. And so I'll go ahead and click on Load Images. And I have a group of panoramic images that I'm going to work with uh, here. Now, I have a full 360. I have all my images. But instead of uh, spending too much time with all my images, I'm going to pick just the first 12 images. Uh, hold on a second here, right there, uh, so that this will actually take a little bit less uh, time to do this, its panorama stitching uh, while you guys are waiting and watching me do this. Now, I could throw all of the images at it at once, but I think for right now, uh, it's better to just do a smaller group so you guys can see it actually in action. Now, it automatically brings in the camera and lens information from my camera, the EXIF data on my camera. Um, so I don't really have to change anything. I could change this if I wanted to. Um, the other thing is from here, all we need to do is click on the Align button uh, in terms of, uh, of starting this alignment process. We could also send it to the Assistant queue. This is really convenient if you're trying to stitch a lot of images because it can do this uh, stitching in the background. But we'll go ahead and click the Align and bring it up uh, in the foreground and let it do its, its process here. So this is the Image Assistant um, or Huggins Assistant here. It's going through and it's analyzing each one of the individual images. Once it's done analyzing those images, it's going to start comparing the images together. So it'll take image one, or excuse me, image zero and image one, and find overlapping match points. And so it's found 25 match points between image zero and image one. Then it'll move on to image one and image two, in which case it's found another 25 matches. And so it'll continue this way for a while until we get through all of our images. Um, then it will try to overlap images, so it'll go from the image 0 to image 2 and try to stitch. It'll go from image 1 to image 3 and find matches between those images as well. And this increases the uh, quality of the stitching. Uh, and so now it's going through and it's analyzing the distances between control points uh, and continuing to optimize our actual image here. So we'll let it keep working and keep its processing here. And we reach the end uh, of our particular image. Um, so let me let me check none here for a second. Let me check all. And of course, uh, the preview isn't working for us to see what's going on here. Uh, let me come back to uh, close the preview and let's try to reopen the preview here again. Uh, I'm going to go up to my window. Uh, of course, you can never find it when you're looking for it, can you? Preview window. There we go. Now we can see this nicely. Uh, I apologize for that before. Uh, there's always little glitches that occur. Uh, and so in here, we can turn on, turn off individual images uh, to, to have some of those updated. Uh, it's pretty straight right now, uh, so I'm not overly worried about it. I can change the overall um, size of this particular image um, so you guys can kind of get a sense here. Uh, if I was stitching a full 360, it would look something like this. So I'd have the black bars on either side of it. And so we'll go ahead and include that for just a second. Um, and now what I'm going to do, and you can see that this image would line up with this image. That's the idea. So we curl it around. Uh, from here, I can use the straighten uh, tools if I wanted to. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and close the panorama preview at this point because I don't really need it. We're going to move on and go through the rest of these tabs. Um, the first is the images. And this is if we were going to add images, we could add it here. Um, and, and work with the individual images. Then we go to the camera lens. This is the camera lens length. Uh, I'm going to continue on with the crop tool here. This would be if you wanted to crop a particular piece out of an image. Uh, likewise, we can have the mask tool. This is where we could mask off, say, that little artifact there that we don't want to see. 
Uh, if we were going to do this kind of a mask, we'd click on Add New Mask, uh, and we'd create a polygon here. Something like this. Oops. Let me adjust it to cover that up. And then in the final image, this mask would uh, be replaced by imagery from one of the other images. And so that could be a really handy way of getting rid of a few little pieces uh, that you wouldn't otherwise want to show up in the final um, panorama. And we can move on here to control points. And this is a really important one to understand. Uh, let me turn on image one and image zero. Um, so we can see that this is one image. This is the image that's next door to it. We go from image 0 to image 1 as we go uh, to our left here. You can see the doorway is right there, and the doorway is right here. Uh, these are the control points that were assigned by uh, Huggin uh, for us. Now, we could manually assign control points, or if we had images that, that we could tell stitched together, um, we could go in and, and actually assign additional control points. So for example, I could click a point here. Uh, it would zoom in on that particular point, and I could come over here and click a point right here, uh, making sure that those were, in fact, identical points. Um, and then once I am done with that, I can go ahead and click Add, and it would add that point 25 there and there. Um, so that would be adding uh, more control points. Uh, we can also come over here to the optimizer. Um, this gives us a variety of uh, ways of optimizing a particular image. Um, the default is just fine. We can click on Optimize now to, to further optimize that image. Uh, under the Exposure tab, this would be if we wanted to adjust um, for a high dynamic range image um, or, or, or what have you, or adjust the exposure. We can do that here as well. And finally, our last tab is the actual Stitcher tab. And this is where we're going to export our information uh, to create a complete panorama of our image. Um, typically, uh, you're going to want to change this cylindrical into equirectangular, which would give us the full um, 180 by 360. Obviously, I didn't load up all those images, so I have a much smaller uh, field of view for right now. Um, we can click on Calculate Field of View to see what we actually have here. Um, it's telling me I have smaller than, than the full 360, which we know because I didn't load all of my images. Uh, and so from here, uh, we can continue and we can adjust um, an exposure corrected low dynamic range. We can do an exposure fused. Um, and all of these options are worth exploring. You can also change uh, which mapping tools you're using. This would be if you loaded up some, some secondary plugins. And when we're finally done, we can go ahead and click Stitch. And it'll create uh, an output. We'll, it'll ask us where we want to save it. Um, and we can go ahead and click Save to move on. And so that's it for Digital Life 0 0.14 using Huggin to panoramic images. Uh, this is uh, digitaltoolsforarchitects.com.